following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Jera. The rune related with the solar harvest. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sowed, that shall he also reap. For he that sowed to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sowed to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Galatians chapter 6, 7 and 8. In re re related to this, we find... The other quotation in John chapter 3 verse 6. That which is born of this flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is the spirit. The rune Jera, as you can see in the graphic of... Uh, the Aztec calendar, which is uh, two uh, runes, we will say two kaums or two R's, rune R's, or one R and one kaum together, which of course is a symbol of uh, the duality, as you can see. The duality within the Trinity. If you observe carefully the sign of the rune Jera, you will see that in the middle of these two uh, symbols of the duality, you find the rune Sikh, which is formed by three lines, which is the, the rune of fire. So that rune Sikh is invisible. <coughs> so therefore, when we study the rune Jera related with harvesting, we have to understand that this other rune is hidden there. Actually, there are three forces. One is hidden and two are shown very clear. We have to use always intuition in order to see these things. Because also in the Aztec calendar, you find these uh, runes in different uh, uh, places. But if we go into the very center of the Aztec calendar, we find then the two runes 
shown on top of the head of the face of Tonatiu, the center of the Aztec calendar. And uh, if you want to see one above and one below, as it is shown in the right uh, of this graphic, you will see that the one above is pointing on the very top of the thorn that is on the top of the head of the Aztec calendar, of the face. And the other one is made by the tongue, which is another vertex. So one vertex above and the other vertex below. Of course, this is the symbol in the Aztec mythology of the duality. The duality which is hidden within the abstract. That's why all the symbols and runes that we are studying are always there in this mysterious stone. Due to the fact that all of them that form the letters of uh, the runic alphabet are coming, are coming from the unknowable which is the word. And that's why you have to use your imagination, your intuition, in order to see other things that are hidden there that only with your heart you can see. And uh, in the, the Aztec pantheon, there is a deity which symbolize the duality of these two forces of the Rune Jera. And this deity is named Ometeotl. Ometeotl is formed by two words. Ome, which means the duality of the two, and Teotl, which is a deity, or the city. Deity? Yeah, the deity. Sometimes we said CT with S instead of the D. That that points, of course, to the letter S, right? Which is the symbol of the fire. CT, which is that that abides in the Omeyokan, according to the Aztec mythology. The Omeyokan is the absolute, which is also called the Tlocle Nahuake. The, the, the place too, where we find this ometeotl, the duality of the divinity, of the city. This ometeotl, when is manifested in the universe, receives uh, two names. Ometecutli, which is the manifestation of the masculinity or the positive force, or the duality. And Omesiguatl. So Ometecutli and Omesiguatl are the two uh, polarities that we see here <coughs> in the rune, Jera, which according to the Aztec mythology are the origin of the universe, in the very center. Which are, of course, that's why uh, when you see that there, you see it in different places in the Aztec calendar. And if you observe, of course, the other lecture that we were given in previous, uh, you see uh, the, this rune, for instance, more above, 
in relation with uh, eight uh, thorns that you find or angles that form the, that are around the the Aztec calendar and that we were showing in other lectures related with the wheel of Dharma. That this, for instance, other symbol that you find in which you find the yin yang, or better said in this case, the three forces of Taoism, which are the Shen, Qi, and Jing. In the English language. Shen, Qi, and Jing. This, for instance, uh, the, this other sign that you see in the right are the symbol of the, uh, in Tibetan uh, mythology, symbology, in which you find uh, actually are the same yin yang. But as I, as I said, here is shown the three forces. And we are going to explain how these three uh, modes of energy called Shen, Qi, and Jing are related with the Rune Jera. Of course, in the Aztec calendar, you find that symbol in the very center of the, of the wheel. which are forming this uh, Dharma wheel of the Tibetan philosophy, which has in the center these uh, three modes of energy called Shen, Qi, and Jing, that manifest through the duality, which is commonly called Yin Yang. You see, the Yin Yang that we are naming in relation with the Aztec pantheon are Ometecutli and Omesigual. This is the expression of the duality that is called Ometeotl, related with the Aztec calendar. But in Taoism or in Buddhism, we always find these forces because they are universal forces. Taoism is really alchemy, a very profound religion to study in relation with the energies. In Kabbalah, of course, we find these forces, and uh, we always name them in different lectures. Keter, Chokhmah, Bina, the three primary forces of the universe that express themselves as duality. But that duality is in itself the trinity. And this is what we are going to explain today in relation with this lecture. So, if you observe, of course, Uh, the symbols that we find there, you will find two dragons. Which uh, one dragon is taking the basis of the tiger, according to the symbol of Taoism. Master Samael Omveor states in the book uh, Alchemy and Kabbalah, Heaven is masculine, young. And its element is fire. The earth is feminine. Ying. And its element is water. In the Taoist doctrine, we find white tantrism. The yin yang, the dragon and the tiger are the axes of Taoism. According to Taoists interpretation, the yin yang is the outcome of Tai Chi. 
which uh, pronounce according to the language is they hi the prima mater of the universe and creation emerges from the sexual union of this pair of opposites Maituna, sexual magic, exists within the white tantrism of India and Tibet. Samael on the or. So, bear in mind that when we talk about yin yang, we are talking about another third force that doesn't show there in the symbol. Because yin yang, as the master explains here, is the masculine and feminine forces, heaven and earth. But in order for those forces to be active, uh, Invisible force has to be active. That's why I said that invisible force is shown in the rune. Jera, which is that rune Sikh, which is invisible in between them. And this is what we have to understand because without the fire, nobody can exist. Nothing can exist. So... When we go into Kabbalah and alchemy, in this Western world, we had to go into the book of Genesis, as we always uh, quote, because the book of Genesis really hides the meaning of this uh, duality within the Trinity. The first verse of the book of Genesis, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. There you have it. Matthew Samael states the heaven is yang and the earth is yin. But uh, if we go into the Hebrew alphabet, the Hebrew words related with this first statement of the book of Genesis. Then we read Berashit Bera Elohim at Shamayim ve at Haretz which is, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. But if you inquire about the different meanings of the word Bereshit, then you find that the letters written there made another uh, word or another statement that is Bet Rashi. Rush or Rush is the head. Rashi, my head. And Bat or Bat is daughter. So when you read Barashith, the first word of the Genesis in Hebrew, you then say, the daughter of my head. Bera Elohim, created Elohim. And that is very profound. Who is this daughter of my head that created Elohim? But Rashi, the daughter of my head, relates, of course, to the very beginning of the universe. Because this daughter that we are talking about is the ains of or. The ains of or, which is the origin of the cosmic days and cosmic nights. Behold there the jera, harvest. Why does the cosmic day exist? Because there is harvesting in the universe. Why does uh, the other opposite of the rune Jera exist, which is the Mahapralaya, the cosmic night? 
because the harvesting was already done. What is what happened when you perform a harvesting? You collect, of course, the good thing and the with, which is bad thing, to your left and one to the right. Then, the, commonly, the ones that are doing this harvesting after it's done, they burned. They burned the leftover. So you see the fire in activity there. But when the burning is done, when the field is already clean, you will say, well, the fire did what it has to do and it's gone. Run. The fire is still there. What happened is that you see the fire in activity. In the universe, what we see when we see light, when we see fire, is the fire in activity. But the fire which is not active, but which is still burning, is there. And that is what is called darkness in Kabbalah and philosophy. That is the S between the two signs of the duality of the rune Jera. That S is black because it's a black fire. Did you ever hear about the black fire? It says that nobody sees it. Only the Paramartha Satyas, the inhabitants of the absolute, can see that black fire. But we only in this part of the universe see the fire that is active. That is burning, shining. Because fire and light goes together. And this is precisely what we have to understand and to comprehend. When the Genesis talks about darkness. What was that that came from the daughter of my head? As it says, Berashit Bera Elohim. The daughter of my head created Elohim. And what is Elohim? Elohim is precisely the Rune Jera. Because Ela means goddess. And the end in I am is masculine plural. Gods and goddesses. Or God and goddess. The duality, male, female. Is what the daughter of my head created. In this case, that head is the Ain Sof. The Ain in the Ain Sof. In the beginning. What is in? In is the absolute. In English. So when you look, for instance, of your own reality, your own essence between you, you have to delve, to dive within you. You go, to, you go in. And the root is your own particular in self. Your own particular star, which is in the in. That's why in English we can say it, in, comma, the beginning because that in is the beginning of everything. And that beginning is the in sof. So we will say in is a in, in the absolute. And the in sof is the beginning. That's why the in sof is called uh, the limitless. So, in the beginning, which is the daughter of my head, created Elohim. But also we can say, in the beginning, the daughter of my head, from the daughter of my head, emerged the bar. Because the word Bera in 
Kabbalah is creation, but also hides the word bar, which in Aramaic means sun. And if you take then the, the Aleph of that word Bera and unite it to the word Elohim, and then you said Berashit be Bar a Elohim, which is precisely that son of Elohim, or the son of a Elohim, which is that city which in Kabbalah is not named. A Elohim. And who is the son of A Elohim? The fire. But I repeat, is black fire. Bear in mind that. Because usually when we think about fire, we think always this flame active there in the universe or burning something. But remember, when the fire burns or had burned anything already, it's no longer there in front of our eyes, but it's there. It's shining in a black way. In the absolute way, we will say. Or in the abstract manner. And that is what we call Elohim. That city within the abstract space. That city within the abstract space exists inside of us. Because it's in the very depth of everything that exists. That's in relation with Kabbalah. The duality of the absolute expressing creation or beginning to create. And that's why it is written, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. But that heaven and the earth are the duality of the Hera, yin yang, within the Trinity. Because heaven is air, which hides the fire. And earth hides the water. That's why when you see the, the runes, you find that are symbolized by one line and another line forming the vertex. Two angles. Of course, the one above is air and fire, as we always symbolize, right? Fire. So the wand above is the symbol of fire and the symbol of air. The one below is the symbol of earth and the symbol of water. Remember always that the line that is the third line is always invisible. You have to use it with your imagination in order to see it. So that's why when we talk about the duality within the Trinity, we always find the four forces together, which are forming the famous Tetragrammaton, the four letter name of God, Yod He Vav He. And this is how we see it in this rune. That's why in the previous runes, you see that they implied movement. That's why in the Aztec calendar, you find that it's called the, the son of movement. So, in the rune, for instance, Inguas, which is the square, you find the two rooms there, but form a very united, in a very uh, uh, square manner. 
the four elements. And this is what happened in the man and the woman when they are active. In the, four, in the, in the rune uh, Hagalas, you always find the same rune there rotating, spinning, as well in the rune Gibor. If you study this rune, you will find that this rune Jera is hidden there, which are related with the Kaum and the rune R. This implies the movement, the forces, within all the runes together. And that's why when you read, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the air was without form and void, you have to imagine that that is the, the, the rune below. The other rune, which is the symbol of the earth, which is empty and without form. But with the activity of the fire, the air brings life thanks to the activity of heaven, which is man and woman. But read the, the next thing that is written in the book of Genesis. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. The deep is the abyss. The deep is that precisely, what we're talking about, the abstract space. Darkness was hovering, hovering on that deep space. That darkness is fire, which is not active in the universe, but is, can become active. Because that darkness is darkness for us, but light for the absolute. That darkness is what we can call the ends of all. <coughs> and this is what you have to understand when it says, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then you read, and the Spirit of God move upon the face of the waters. Spirit, in Hebrew, is also wind, air. We can say, and the air, the Spirit of God, of Elohim, which is above, move upon the face of the waters, which are the forces below of the Runjera. And Elohim said, let there be light. And there was light. But read that, it says, and God saw that the light that is was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Hmm? It's very clear there that the light that we are seeing in the universe that Elohim is creating is coming from the darkness. That's why Master Samael on the Or explains the darkness is father-mother. Or in the Aztec terms, we will say, darkness is ometekutli and omesiguadol. That darkness is ometeotol, within which the duality is hidden. But all of this manifestation appears, and the light appears, from the darkness. That's why... Elohim divided, or we will say, took the light from the black fire. And this is how you have to understand. Because this is the same that we have to repeat. It is stated that that black fire, which is not shown in the universe, is what we call Christ, the cosmic Christ that shines also in different levels. And that is within us, inside, in the very depth of our consciousness. We find that black light. You have it. If you close your eyes in meditation, and you go within, you find that black light. You are not with the capacity of seeing that light or dark fire. Because you need to develop what the Master Samael explained, the prajna paramita type of vision in which you can see the light 
as, as one Paramartha Satya inhabitant of the Absolute. But before that, we know that that light is there, or that black fire. And the way in order to see it, or to, to see that light, is by putting into activity the light that comes from that darkness. And that's precisely the work that we do in alchemy. Because we want to awake that light, or that rune sikh, which is the kundalini. When it appears, it comes from the darkness. And that's why it is stated that when you practice sexual magic, you have to do it in darkness. Because that is the black fire. That, the Catholic Church, name it Lucifer, as something evil. But it's not. Carrier of the light is named Lucifer. Lucy, light. Fair, fire. The fire that carries the light. But that fire that carries the light, my friends, is not the fire that we see here. It's black fire. Do you understand that? It's black fire. That's why Lucifer is represented as something black. Darkness. Because the light comes from the darkness. That black fire that is inside of us. Bearing that in mind, in order to comprehend this marvelous symbol of the rune Jera, which is symbolized in these two dragons, that are the yin yang. But if you see in the symbol of this yin yang symbol, the two dragons, you find another serpent behind. That serpent is precisely the dark fire. The dark light from which the light emerges. And God called the light day. The cosmic day. In the microcosmic manner. Or we will say in Sanskrit, God called, or Elohim called that, Maha Mambantara. The activity of that light. But... And the darkness, he called night, because the darkness is when that darkness, with that fire, which is black, is not active. It's in repose, calm. So that is what we call night. Or we will say the Maha Pralaya in Sanskrit. You see how everything is hidden in, in the book of Genesis? In relation with the rune Jera? Day, cosmic day. Night, cosmic night. And the evening and the morning was the first cosmic day. This, what is shown there in the macrocosmic manner, has to be repeated in us. In a microcosmic manner. Because if you think that the absolute is out there, you are wrong. The absolute is within you. It's a, the abstract space. When you inquire about your physicality of your psyche of your spirit, beyond that is a space. Beyond matter. In different densities, there's always the space. That is space is called the abstract space. And each one of us has his own particular part of that space, which is called the Ein Sof. And that the Ein Sof is the daughter of my head. Not my head. It is what is written there. But Rashi, the daughter of the head of the universe, which is the Ain, because that's the origin of everything. But that but is the Ain Sof that creates the Elohim in the universe in order for them to appear in this multidimensional universe. That Elohim, of course, are the gods and goddesses in Atziluth, in Bria, Yetzira, Asia, everywhere. Is that God that we have within 
that we need to self-realize. Let us go into this trinity that we are talking about. Shen, Qi, and Jing. The Tao manifests its power through the three treasures of the light. In Pisi Sophia, written by the disciples of Master Jesus and explained by the Master Samael on Veor, it was written there about the treasury of the light, which is called Barbello. But let me tell you that the manifested light of that treasury is precisely the three primary forces. That's why in Taoism, they say that there are three treasures, treasures of the light, or three modes of energy. Shen, Qi, and Jing, which are the three principles of the universe. The three treasures of the light manifest in the heavens, in the earth, and in the human being. Each of them contains their own three treasures of the light. The three treasures of heaven are the stars, Shen, Atziluth, the spirit. The sun is Chi, related with Bria, and the moon is Jing, related with Yetzirah. The three treasures of the earth, which is Asya, which is also called Prithvi in Sanskrit, are air, Shen, Bayu, water, Chi, Apas, and fire, Jin, Tehas. Now, the three treasures in the human being are intellectual brain, Shen, emotional brain, Chi, and motor instinctual sexual brain, Jing. So these three modes of energy related with Taoism, as you see, are related with our three brains. We had to use a lot of intuition in order to understand this, because remember that in Taoism, Shen Qi and Jing, which are symbolized there with Shen, blue, Qi, yellow, and Jin, red, are the three primary colors of the universe related with what in Christianity are called Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which are energies. Many times we stated that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit of Christianity are not people, are not persons, forces. In Taoism, it's present them beautifully. In Kabbalah, Sketer Chokhmah Bina related with the Holy Trinity, which is called the Triyamatsikamno La, which is the law that creates. So, of course, this law of three that creates is expressing itself in the abstract manner and in the concrete manner in the first verse of the book of Genesis. But remember, that the book of Genesis talks about seven days. People used to mistake and think that these seven days of Genesis are seven days or 24 hours, as we have it here. They do not understand the cryptic manner in which the book of Genesis was written. We have to understand and comprehend that seven days are related with the law of the Epta. Para Parshinok, the law that organizes. So when we talk about harvesting creation, we have to understand about the law of seven. The law, the law that organizes. And this law of seven is marvelously shown, as we always said, in the harvesting of the seven sons. 
Remember that in the lecture, the end of Kali Yuga, of the Master Samael on the Or, he talks about the seven suns. And of course, in the very center of the Aztec calendar, you find there are only four suns and the one in the center, the fifth. And it's because in this solar system, I mean, in this planet Earth, in this very moment, we are the fifth root race, or as they are called, the children of the fifth sun. If you remember about the seven spirits before the throne of God that are written in the book of Revelation, we said that they are named Gabriel, the moon, Raphael, Mercury, Uriel, Venus, Michael, the sun, Samael, Mars, the fifth, Zahariel, Jupiter, and Saturn, Orifiel. Those are the seven spirits, or seven cosmo creators. And this is precisely what the Aztec calendar shows us, the stone. The harvesting of the seven suns. Is the rune jera there. That's why you see the rune jera above the head and be in the tongue, symbolizing the triangular tongue of Tonatiu, the son of movement. And you see the rune jera also expressed in the squares, united in the squares that we call inguas. And you see also the kaum, or eight points around in the circle, which are, of course, the same rune, in the eight manner, as we saw it in the symbol of, uh, of uh, Tibet, the, wheel, the Dharma wheel, which it has in the center the Sheng, Qi, and Jing, the three forces which express themselves in the universe, not only in our physical body. Shen Chi and Jing, as we see there, is in the manifest in the world of Atsiluth, world of Bria, creation, world of uh, Yetzirah, formation, because these three uh, modes of energy are the base of life in different densities are the three primary forces that we have to work with within the duality. Commonly, in Taoism, they only talk about yin-yang in relation with qi. But uh, they don't talk about yin-yang in relation with shen and with jing. Well, we talk about jing, which is precisely the essence energy. Because jing is sense essence energy and is related with the kidneys in our physicality which creates the ovum and the sperm masculine feminine and as energy rise that gene energy rise as chi energy coming from the essence which is the semen in other words up to the brain, thanks to the two uh, cords that we have, Idapingala, it's called in Sanskrit, the two witnesses, yin yang. But of course, we have to understand that thanks to the two, the the union of these two polarities, yin yang of chi, that emerges from the yin, your sexual matter, another third force which is Shen, spirit, rises in the spinal medulla. And this is how you see the three modes of energy in your own physical body. But we are talking about how to sublimate those forces within our, within our physicality, psychology, and spirituality. But we have to understand that these three modes of energy descend also from heaven 
and we explain. Matthew Amelon Vero explains about the three modes of Akashic force, or three breaths of Akasha that enter into your nostrils and go down through the three nervous systems. Or the three, we will say, uh, channels called Shushumna Idaim Pingala. So this rune, Jeda, really, is a rune of alchemy, very profound. Master Zamael explains uh, uh, our relation with the harvesting that is shown in the Aztec calendar that the children of the first son were devoured by wisdom, or by the tigers, symbol of the fire, too, and wisdom. If you understand about alchemy, you will understand that the fire burned them completely. And they became one with the tiger, with the fire, or with the darkness. The children of the second son were destroyed by great hurricanes. And become transformed into apes. Some of them degenerated. The children of the third son, or the harvesting of that son, relates with the Lemurian. They were destroyed by rain of fire, and they transformed into birds. And then the previous root race that existed before this root race, which was the Atlantean race, it is stated that they were devoured by the waters and transformed themselves into fish. But when you study the Aztec calendar about the harvesting of these uh, previous four root races, it's very clear in symbols there. But they don't say anything about us in relation with the harvesting. How are we going to transform? In what symbolic animal are we going to be transformed? But they say that the children of the fifth son, which is in the very center, which is Tonatiu, the son of movement, will be destroyed by earthquakes and fire, which is being fulfilled. That fire, of course, the fire of volcanoes. Remember that we said that Samael is the king of volcanoes and earthquakes. Now, the Bible talks about the symbolic animal to which this root race is going to be transformed into. And Master Jesus says that in the end, some will become goats and other sheep. So here you find the duality again of Jera, the harvesting of this fifth root race will be, of course, goats and sheep. Now, if you inquire about the symbol of the ram or sheep, relates to the sign of Aries. And of course, Aries is related with the head. That's why you find that in the very center of the Aztec calendar, you find the sun in the very center, which is a head. And it's because the son of Aries rules all the head. And it's Amael, whose symbol is the ram, related with sheep. In order for that head to shine, we have to transmute the sexual energy with the mysteries of Taoism, alchemy, yin yang, and the three modes of energy or treasures of the light in Taoism. Otherwise, if we don't do it, then we will, we will become goats. Have you seen a goat over the symbol of the sexual energy that is utilized in the, in the wrong manner? So the goat 
is something that we have to transform because all of us here present, without exception, is a goat. We are goats. And we have to transform ourselves into sheep. Because the goat is a fornicator animal. That's all the animals. And uh, we are the children of the fifth son. Right now, of course, we see here, we are in the dilemma of, of, of to be or not to be. Master Samael on the or, that rules the fifth son, came and gave the knowledge for us in order to be transformed into sheep. That if we want to belong to the harvesting of the fifth son, because that which is bad, which are the goats, will be thrown in the abyss. And the fire will burn them. The fire of their own passions. The fire of the earth as well. Because remember that in the very center of the earth, the ego is incinerated, cremated. Whether we are cremated in that way, or in the alchemical, initiatic manner. And that's why we are teaching this. In order for us to become sheep. Remember that the parable of uh, the sheep and goat says that the sheep are in the left. And the, I mean in the right, the sheep in the right and the goats in the left. And Jesus says, you sheep come and inherit the kingdom of my father. And the goats to the left... To the darkness. But that darkness, of course, is not the darkness that we were talking in the beginning. That darkness is the other type of darkness which is in the abyss. Because there are many types of darkness. It's not that black darkness that we were talking in the beginning, which is divine. So, of course, the Aztec calendar says that the children of the, of, of the fifth son in that epoch, the gods will die. And believe me, the gods are dead in this, some, in this uh, root race. Many bodhisattvas as well of great gods, angels, fell in this epoch. But it's written that in the sixth root race, which is coming after the destruction, this fifth, the gods will resurrect. But the gods will resurrect just by just by a gift, or just because somebody says it, or because the calendar says it. No. The gods will resurrect if the Bodhisattva annihilates the ego and shine again within, within himself, within themselves. And many Bodhisattvas that are fallen, they have to rise again and to shine and then to resurrect. Resurrection is something that we explain in other lectures. Many types of resurrection. So the God has to resurrect. If you are entering into this path, your God will resurrect within you. That's precisely the mystery of the Runjera. Because it means solar harvesting. And in the epochs of the seventh sun, everything will be divine. This is how we understand the symbol of this Runjera in relation with Taoism, in relation with the Aztec calendar, in relation with Christianity, in relation with Kabbalah. Let us go deep into this study. And study... <clears throat> the tree of life. Remember that we stated that there are two laws in relation with the universe, main ones. The law of three which is the law of the three Yamatsi Kamno, related with Keter, Chokmah, and Binah. 
And also, with that, because that mysterious sephira that, which is below the first triangle, we always have stated in different lectures, high is the mystery of the duality within the trinity. So there is a trinity there in the duality in that. This is precisely what you have to understand and comprehend. One thing is the trinity in the first triangle, and another is the trinity in that, which expresses itself through the duality. In other words, the runjera really belongs to that, which is the duality. Father, mother, as we say, the Elohim manifesting its power of creation, but because of the force, which is always hidden, which is the fire, the S, the Runsich, between the two symbols of the duality of the Runjera. And below, we find the other seven Sephiroth which relates to the law of seven, the epta para par shinak, the, the, the law that organizes. Let us go down into our physicality in order to understand how that which is done in the macrocosmos has to be performed into the microcosmos. Because this is stated in many parts of the Bible that the physical body is the temple of God. Malkut is the temple of God. Paul of Tarsus states in the Bible that our physical body is a temple of the living God. And many people that hear this or read this do not understand in which way is God within us. Let us study that. And see, for instance, the respiratory system that relates to Shen. When you study Taoism, you find that there are uh, specific points where Shen abides in the body. But the main one is the lungs. And it is because that spirit of God enters through the nostrils. Remember, that is written in the book of Genesis. And God blew the breath of life into the nostrils of Adam. And Adam became a living soul. So Shen is soul, is a spirit, is also mind. This is how we have to understand it. And that enters mainly in the physicality, in our physicality, through the nostrils. In order for us to be alive. So when we talk about the respiratory system, we talk about Keter, which is abstract, like the air. <coughs> but remember that we talk about that in many lectures already, about Aleph, about the breath. And uh, when we talk about the air, the oxygen, related with the lungs, we talk about the heart as well. Because remember that between the lungs is the heart. And the heart 
is that organ that deals with the blood. Of course, when we talk about the blood, we talk about chi. So here how that, I know the lectures told you how chi is in relation with shen. And that's why when we talk about shen or chi, you go to the, this center here in the, in the heart or in the lungs. But also shen relates to the spleen and to the liver in a very subtle manner. Because the shen you have in your lungs purify your chi in your heart, which eventually descends into jing, which is related with your kidneys. Because that jing becomes semen, sexual matter. That's why in Taoism, I advise not to ejaculate the semen, to retain, because if you retain that jing, eventually it's transformed into qi, and eventually into shen. And you will be filled, full of energy. So behold this, kidneys, in relation with jing. And then the heart, in relation with qi. And the lungs, in relation with Shen. But also the liver and the spleen that relates with the blood are related with it. There is in esotericism a seal that you have to learn, which is called the Ankh Cross Seal. It is also called the Tao Seal or the Tao Cross. Sometimes we say the Tao Cross or the Ankh Cross. And is when you perform a circle from your chest, which is precisely your lungs and your heart, you descend to your spleen, liver, making a circle up to the uh, like that, and close it again in your heart. That is the famous circle of the Tao, or the Ankh cross, a circle, which in the human body unites those meridians, which is also called diantans. Remember, liver, kidneys, spleen, heart, and lungs, which are, of course, in relation with the Shen, Shen that you find in different uh, modalities in the Trinity or the Three Treasures that we call Shen, Qi and Jing of Taoism. So when you do that seal here and then you descend that force from your kidneys to your sex. That means that your shen and your chi, which is accumulated in your kidneys, descends from your kidneys to the sex and from the spleen to the liver, making the horizontal line of the cross, the Tao cross. There's an esoteric, esoteric force or esoteric seal that initiates do in order to protect from negative forces. The circle and then the, the cross below, Ankh cross or Tao cross that protects us against the negative forces. But remember that the three treasures are there because the kidney contains the gene, the heart, the liver and the spleen related with Qi and the lungs with Shen. There is another seal also that is done among the Gnostics. They call the seal of the cross. <coughs> in this way, the cross remains in the middle of the circle. It's another seal that also protects you. And you start with Shen, which is in the root of your nose, which is precisely the root 
of the atom of the father. From there, you said, in the name of the father, the son, and then you go into the heart. Because the heart is the kingdom of the son, the chi. And the Holy Spirit, which goes directly into your sexual glands. But in order to do that cross, you have to do the horizontal cross too. But here is the symbol and the meaning of the movement. You, you lift from the sex to your left shoulder, which is Gebura. Towards the Hesed, the right shoulder, which is also called Gedula. You see that movement? In the left. Why the left? Because the left is the fallen serpent. The fallen serpent that we are accustomed to fornicate with. But when you do that sign, you are saying, I am putting the Holy Spirit in my monad. That monad is Gebura, Tiferet in the heart, and Hesed in the right shoulder. So you are uniting the Holy Spirit in your monad. That's the protection. You see, in the name of the Father, the Son in the heart, the Holy Spirit, and immediately you lift it to your left shoulder and cross it in your monad. So the Holy Spirit remains united with the Son. People think that the Holy Spirit is the heart. They think that the Son is, is in sex. No, the Son is in the heart, the Holy Spirit is in the sex. But if you understand the movement of that seal, do you understand why you're doing it? You are transmuting the sexual jing into chi. And then you said you cross the the, I mean, you encircle the cross with a circle, and you said, by the, again, in, from your head to the left, by the tetragrammaton. What is the tetragrammaton? It's yod he vav he the four-letter name of God. So when you encircle there, descending in the left towards the right, you are encircling the cross, With a famous tetragrammaton. And you are sealing yourself. Protecting yourself. Many Gnostics do that. But they don't understand why they are doing that. There are three primary forces. Shen, Qi, and Jing. And enclosing the four elements. Fire, air, water, and earth. With a circle. Because when you say tetragrammaton, you are naming the four elements. Because God, the famous Tetragrammaton, commands nature in your own body. This is the other seal in relation with the Holy Trinity and this uh, Taoism, of the cross Tao and the other cross. Do not mistake the second cross with the common cross that the Catholics perform. They say in the name of the Father, the Son, and they cross their heart. They don't go to, towards the sex because it's a mechanical thing that they don't know what they're doing. They just do it mechanically. The sun, yeah, is in the heart. But the Holy Spirit like that? No, you have to descend to the sex because you have to rise the Holy Spirit. The destruction sexual energy. Your jing. Do not mistake this word, jing. J-I-N-G with ying. They are very similar. Actually, if you uh, speak Chinese, you won't find a uh, uh, problem in it. But none of us speak Chinese. There's only one student that is uh, studying it. But it's a very difficult language. I discovered there, for instance, that you said Tai Chi. And they said the pronunciation is not Tai Chi. It's Tai Hai. This is what I, what I found. Tai Hai. Tai Hai. Well, many dialects in China. 
So you understand that? Really with the Shen? How the force of the Spirit protects you? Now let us go down into Chokmah. Which is related with the bone marrow, the chi. You will say, why? Let's see. In the Bible you find in Proverbs 3, 7, 8. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear yod heh he and depart from evil. yod heh he shall be health to thy navel. You see? Which is the, when you find the, the, the chi energy or the jing energy. And marrow to thy bones. Marrow to thy bones. What is that? The marrow is the main element in our organism that creates red cells. Blood is created in many other <coughs> organs, of course, but the main one is the marrow of your bones. This is where the red cells are related. And the red cells are related with Chokmah. Chokmah is yod he bab he in Kabbalah. The first part in the Bible when appears the name Jehovah is in Chokmah, the tree of life. You want to find where is your Chokmah? It's in the marrow of your bones. Physically speaking, creating red cells, which is life for you. Of course, uh, also in the navel, which is that chi that we're talking about here, is that the same energy. And that's why when you talk in Kabbalah about the chi bone marrow, Talking about that. And uh, how many bloods, drops of blood do you need in order to create one drop of semen? Whether masculine or feminine. Because the woman also had semen, but feminine. We call it in, in Gnosticism, semen too. But one is feminine, the other masculine. But how many bloods, drops of blood do you need in order to create one drop of that? We will say it. How many drops of chi, of red cells, do you need in order to create one drop of jing? 80. 80 drops. But there are many differences in different uh, 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 philosophies. But the thing is that you need a lot of drops of blood in order to create one drop of gene. So when you ejaculate one drop, imagine how much chi are you losing. That's why when you transmute that essence, that gene into chi, this is what in Kabbalah, in alchemy, is called the soul of the mercury that is rising through it up in Gala, that are coming from your own jing when you transmute. And eventually will create your own shen within you or fortify your own shen that you take when you breed. We call the importance of that. And of course, the Holy Spirit is jing, the creative energy. Which is the mystery of the duality. Because remember that if you want to find the duality expressed physically in this three-dimensional world, then you hire the man or the woman. When they unite, sexually speaking, then you have the third force that is united, yin-yang. Remember that. When you see yin yang, there is a third force hidden there that is putting them in movement. Or as we say, when a man and a woman are in the sexual act, yin yang, there is a movement, and that is a sexual energy, shen, the Holy Spirit. <coughs> and of course, 
you find that that things in relation also with the two modalities of the blood. That's why you find the blue, the impure blood, and the red, the pure blood. Because also they are related with the lower organs below and with the circulatory system. In that way. In that way because if cell, uh, red cells are Hogma, Chi, the Christ, and then the outcome of it, which is the creative energy, the Jing, is the Holy Spirit, which is the outcome of the blood. That's the Trinity within you. Remember, the simple way in order to comprehend that is by taking every triangle, the tree of life, and place it in your three brains. Your head, your intellectual brain, your heart, your emotional brain, and your sexual organs, the Holy Spirit, your motor instinctual sexual brain. This is how you place it. And now you find that's why when, I, when we talk about Keter, we talk about the breath in the head, how you breathe. When you talk about Chi, Chochma, you put it in your heart which is the red cells, and then the Holy Spirit in the sexual energy, the three modalities of energy there in your three brains. But then you find that below the Trinity is that, which relates to the, your nervous system, or the three nervous systems, because we have three nervous systems. The central nervous system, the grand sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic. And we always state that that, the nervous system, in your physicality, is related with the tree of good and evil. And in this way you can understand how these nervous systems relate to the, the three primary forces. But do not mistake the first triangle with this that the tree of good and evil because then they are inverted the forces are inverted in order to create Chochma, for instance through that works in the central nervous system through the shushumna channel while the father which is keter works through pingala and Ida is Bina, which is a parasympathetic or vagus nervous system. They inverted there in order to work because the Holy Spirit controls the sexual energy. But in the three nervous systems, the sun is Shushumna. That is a way in order to comprehend this, but do not mistake, I repeat, the first triangle, because we, we talk in the first triangle about the three brains, but now we are talking about the three nervous systems that relate to the three brains as well, but in the way of alchemy, creation. Remember, the duality is that, pingala and ida, and the outcome of that union is shushumna which is the fire in our physicality. Below that, we find Gedula, that relates to the skeletal system. Gedula or, or Gesed, which is the spirit, your own particular spirit, which is called the true man. Because remember that the true man is a spirit that has two souls, spiritual soul and human soul. Below this trinity are the other bodies, the mind, the emotion, the vital body, and the physicality. But the spirit is Gedulah. That's why in the Bible you find that it's written, 
And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So you said, you, rem you see that? That the Bible, the Bible is quoting the bones and the flesh in relation with the true man, Adam. But when people read that, they don't understand about the different symbols in relation with the tree of life. If Adam said, this is bone of my bones, he's saying, this is part of Chesed and it's part of Geburah, which is my flesh. Or my own blood. Part of the superior parts. is not like the people think. Like the woman here is part of the bones, the physical bones of Adam and the flesh of Adam, physically speaking. No. He's talking about symbolically. And that's why when you talk about bones, you talk also about, about Abraham. Remember that Chesed, all what we said, is Abraham. And who is the God of Abraham? It's Yob He Bab He. It's Jehovah. Is that the God of Abraham? And where is Yob He Bab He, the God of Abraham? It's in the marrow of, of our bones. So if you, of course, find that symbolism about the bones of being Abraham, that's why uh, the Kabbalists of Sohar. They state, or many other Kabbalists state, that we have 248 bones in the body. But this is a debate about how many. But they said it's always 248. Why? Because the numerical value of the word uh, Abraham is 248, according to the values of the letters. And because Abraham relates to the skeletal symbol, skeletal system, the bones. That is your Abraham in your physicality. Your own Hesed is the bone, and your own flesh is Geburah. Now let us go down. Into Geburah. Which is the circulatory system. In the previous lecture and other lectures that we gave, we talk about that the circulatory system has that system of systole, diastole, systole, diastole, the two movements of the blood in the, the body, which are controlled by the heart. The heart, of course, is the organ that takes that systole diastole. But the one that is doing that systole diastole, the might is Geburah. And this is what people don't understand. Now, again, if you take the triangle of Chesed, Geburah, and Tiferet, and then you place it, Geburah, in the heart, related with the circulatory system. Chesed, of course, in your head. And Tiferet in the sexual organ. Then you find why Geburah relates to the circulatory system. But in reality, Geburah relates with Tifereth as well. Because it's in relation with the heart. Geburah and Tifereth, we said in the previous lectures, are related to two sons. Geburah is one son, S-U-N, and the heart is another son, S-U-N, Tifereth. Two mites, two forces that work in our organism. Remember that this is in relation with the Eptaparaparshinok, the way in which our body is organized according to the energies of the law of seven and the law of three. Because our body is a temple of the living God. Now we go into the next system, which is the muscular system, whose center is the heart. The heart is also a gland, but it's also a muscle. It's called a muscular gland or a glandular muscle that relate with 
the whole muscles of the organism. Because thanks to the circulatory system, all the blood nourishes the tendons and muscles of our physicality. And this is what gives us beauty. Because in the muscles is the beauty. You know, in this day and age, everybody is want, wanting to develop the muscles and have a nice shaped body. Muscular body. And that's why Tiferet, which is called beauty, is also called splendor or glory. Sometimes in Kabbalah, when we say glory, we say it's hod. But hod and Tiferet have the same meaning. You can use Tiferet or, or hod in order to say glory or splendor in Kabbalah. But in this case, the muscular system related with Tiferet is in relation with the heart, which is the center of the muscular system. That's why uh, in the <coughs> when you place, uh, for instance, the next triangle, which is Netzach, Hod, and Yesod, you find that Hod remains in the center in the heart as well. Hmm? Netzach, which is the mind in the head, Hod in the heart, and then Tifer, uh, Yesod in your sexual organs. Then you find, of course, that Hod and Tifereth mixed in relation with this that we are talking about here of the energies that relate to our system, our physicality. Now, Netzach, which is the mind, as we explained in different lectures, and that is ruled, all the endocrine glands are ruled by Peter. We talk about Peter. The first apostle of the Lord, which is that intelligence, that archetype, whose chi controls the sexual glands, but also is the head of all the glands. They relate to each other. And this is precisely what we have to understand because when we talk about the endocrine system, we talk about the milk, which is that fluid of the hormonal system. In the Bible, you talk about or you read about the milk. What is the milk of the Bible? The Bible talks about that the uh, rivers of Eden poured milk and honey. We talked about that in the previous lecture. That milk is a secretion, a secretion of the glands of the endocrine system that is related with the mind, with the sah. If we go into the previous Sephiroth in relation with the Epta Paraparshinok, the last seven, we find that Gebura is in relation with that fluid that is called wine. Wine, which is the symbol of fire in alchemy. And he said is in relation with that fluid which is called water. While Tifereth is in relation with that fluid which is called blood. So you see that? Water, wine, and blood. We talked that in the previous lecture. How that water, which is said, that descends, in this case, to the sexual organs, have to be sublimated in order to become wine, the wine of the transubstantiation. That's why when you perform any transubstantiation, the Eucharist, you are working with that triangle of Hesed, Geburah, and Tifereth in your heart. This marvelous way of the transubstantiation. But you need, of course, a lot of energy in, to, in order to do that. You need milk. And that milk is related with the endocrine system. Now you find the next, uh, the next slide, which is called HOD, related with the immune system. The immune system, of course, is a main system that we have that allows us to reject the microbes and different sicknesses that we have in the body. And uh, that is ruled by the moon. When you find, for instance, uh, uh, that the red cells and other organs in your physical body are created, I mean, the red cells are created by different organs in your physical body, mainly by by the marrow of your bones. 
but there are other cells that also are created in your physical body, in your blood, that is called white cells. Those white cells are related with the lymph. The lymph, which is that liquid also related with hod, but ruled by the moon. Remember that in Gnostic esotericism, we state that the moon rules hod as well as yesod. And of course, those white cells circulate in the blood. That's why sometimes we say that hod relates to the blood. But biblically speaking, that is what the Bible calls the dew. D-E-W, the dew. That dew that emanates that, uh, or that is secreted by your immune system. But remember that that dew circulates in your blood together with the milk, together with the water, the wine in your blood. Now, down, we find Yesod, related, of course, with our reproductive system, in which we find very clear the two polarities of yin yang. But remember that that rune jera in relation with these systems work. And every system, remember that we stated that the first triangle, keter chuma bina, relates to the law of the triamatsikano, the law of three. And the rest, the other system that we are studying here, is the law of seven that organizes. So, of course, the female reproductive system and male reproductive system relates to Yesod, in which we found the Jing, the forces of the Holy Spirit, that we need to work with. Down below, Malkut, that already are many lectures related with that, with the digestive system. Also, Malkut is related with our skin the skin that protects all the systems that we have. Because remember that the skin, our physical skin, shows the different systems that we have within. If one of those systems is not working properly, your skin is going to show you. That's why a healthy body is shown to the skin, to Malkut, which relates, of course, also to the digestive system. And of course, we cannot put aside Klipoth, because it's also inside. We didn't put it here, but Klipoth also is in relation with your intestines. That relates to the, to, to the digestive system. When you put in your stomach the food that you need in order to survive in this physicality, in this physical world, your intestines also take the nutrients and the leftover is thrown to the toilet. And that, of course, is in relation with Klipoth. Klipoth is the one that are related with the refuse in your physicality and relates to your, to your, to your digestive system. If we want to talk about Klipoth in relation with it, but it's not, it doesn't enter in this way with the law of Epta Parapashinok. Because it's the law that organizes creation. Clipoth is just the leftover. Even though the digestive system takes through the intestines the nutrients that we need in order to create a lot of chi, a lot of jing, a lot of shen within us. If we know the science of alchemy. So that's why when we go to our physicality, we find the saying of Master Jesus. Master Jesus said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Hmm? Then said the Jews, 40 and 6 years was this temple in building. And will thou read it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. But in the way that we explain here. The temple of our body, that is, and where all these forces, those energies are involved, 
that we destroy. Because usually we destroy, we go old and then we die. We destroy it. But Master Jesus said, destroy it, relating to his physical body. And I, uh, <coughs> we raise in three days. These three days are symbolic days, of course. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them. And they believed the scriptures and the world which Jesus had said. John chapter 2, 19 to 22. Do you understand now the saying of Master Jesus? It's not like the common and ordinary people think. Oh, if I believe in Jesus, I will resurrect. He was talking about the temple of his body. But he knew about this that we're talking about here. About the system of the body, how they are related with the law of seven and the law of three, with the three primary forces, with Shen, Qi, and Jing, and with Jing and Yang. Because he explains that also in the Bible. How to be born again by the water and by the spirit. And that's why we end uh, the lecture always with our best friend, Martha. <laughs> Martha is always there, showing us that if we want a lot of chi, we have to know how to feed ourselves. Because we, we take the shen, which becomes chi in our body, when we breed. But also through the impressions that we receive through our physicality. But the main nutrient in order to have a healthy body is uh, in the hands of Martha, which is the consciousness. Hmm? That wisdom hidden in the body that transforms the food in the positive manner. And that we, to, we have to take advantage of. Do you have questions? Yes. When we want to be protected, the question is, what do we have to be done in order to do that cross with the circle? We always do it in order to protect ourselves. We can do it physically, but if somebody is looking at us and they will say, what, what is this person doing? You can do it uh, uh, with your imagination. And trace the cross. Like, the Catholics know very well about this name of the cross and in the, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the right way, as I said, is the Father in the root of your nose, then the heart, which is the temple of the, Holy, uh, of the Son, Chokmah, and the Holy Spirit, the sexual organs. And to raise that Holy Spirit to the left, to the right. And then by the tetragrammaton, making a circle from the left, descending to the left and rising to the right. Many uh, Gnostics says, one time I was teaching there, and he says, but the chakras rotate from the right to the left. And I said, and who's talking about chakras here? I didn't talk about chakras. I'm talking about the seal, which is different. Leave the chakras alone. <laughs> right? They rotate in that way. But this is a seal. I didn't say it's a chakra. Right? And why is from to the left to the right? Simple. Because yod he -he is written in that way. Yod, he, vav, he. To the left, not to the right. You do it to the right, and then you are writing Havayot, which is different. The opposite of Jehovah. You see? Hava Yod, or Havayot, I'd say. You do it to the right, it's Havayot. Then you are opening. You are closing with Yod, he, va. Yod, he, vav, he. Written Yod in the head. He in the left shoulder, Vav in your sexual organs, and the other He in your other shoulder. And then you close the circle. The famous tetragrammaton. That's the seal. That's what your question is, right? Yeah. The other is more advanced in relation with the Tao cross seal. Very powerful, too. Do you have another question? Yeah? How do you rate, relate all this to the three souls? 
How do I relate this to the three souls of Kabbalah? Well, we will say that the Shin energy is in relation with uh, uh, how you call the animal soul, nefesh. The Chi is uh, relation with ruach, in neshama, the spiritual soul, of course, related really with Shen. That will say it will be related with the lower triangle or the or the three primary four because the three souls of Kabbalah, Neshama, Ruach, and Nefesh, express themselves of energy also in different levels, according to the initiation. So the Rune Jera really, which is related with harvesting, as you see. Depends how you use your energy. We need a harvesting of solar men. But in order to perform that harvesting, you have to take care of your body. Because the rest of the bodies that we eventually will create are archetypes. With the exception of those that already created them. They are no archetypes, they are already done. But those that are beginning in this knowledge... All of those bodies are archetypes. And they need energy in order to build them. And that's why it says the template, the master uh, Ilarion, number nine, Paul of Tarsus said, your temple is a temple of the spirit. When it says spirit is the is a Shen. And also the temple of Chi and Jin. If you take advantage of those forces, then you will create. So don't deceive yourselves. If you are wasting those three modes of energy, what are you going to create? We need to save energy. You know, those energies circulate in all the systems, as you see, in our organism, and relates to the tree of life. And yes? Does the Leviathan have any relation to the digestive system? The Leviathan has any relation to the digestive system? With, yeah, it's in relation with all the systems. Leviathan is that energy, of course, or the energy of Levi, Levi, <coughs> is the energy of willpower that we have to work with. It's not only related with the, 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 all the energy, but for instance, with the three primary forces. Leviathan is in relation with Shen, Qi, and Jing. Acts in different levels. That's why it is written that Leviathan is a, has the power of swimming in the waters and flying in the air. That Leviathan is the power of Lucifer. And Lucifer is the ray of creation that descends in different modalities in us. First, it's a black dragon and becomes the heavenly dragon in Taoism. Do not mistake the black dragon that we are talking here with the black dragon of the Book of Revelation, which is the ego. That's completely different. That you have to be skillful in interpretation and symbols in order not to fall into mistakes. Because when you don't know how to read, then you make a lot of mistakes. Then why you need a lot of meditation. So the Leviathan, of course... Is that intelligent force that we had to, to uh, control and that we had to learn how to uh, manipulate? Yes? You talked about the milk, the water, the wine, the blood, but how do these substances relate to each other? How do they work together? If you study all the relationship of all the, the systems in the physical body, you will see the relation. The blood. The heart in the center deals with the circulatory system, deals with the immune system, deals with the endocrinal system, with the reproductive system, the skeletal system, muscular system. You see the blood? That's why Tifereth is the one that is in charge in order to do the work. The heart. Because the heart deals with all of those forces. The food that we eat transforms into energy that the heart takes and purifies through the lungs. That's why, uh, for instance, uh, uh, 
the liquid or the fluid related with the reproductive system is called olive oil in the Bible. And I told you in the lectures that the other fluid in relation with the digestive system is honey. Then you find honey, digestive system, olive oil, reproductive system. And it's because during the sexual act, the sexual organ is the one that emits that oil or lubricant in order to have the pleasure of the sexual act. But that olive oil has to be transmuted also, which is related also with the jing that we have to liberate, the chi that we have to liberate from the jing. And that, of course, that's why the sexual organs are related with olive oil. Anoint. And the anointment with olive oil implies sexual activity. This is the one of the meaning of that. Then the dew that it circulates in the, in the blood is in relation with hod, which is the lympha, or the lymph, the white cells that helps to fight the sicknesses and microbes in our organism. And that circulates in the blood. When you transmute your olive oil, which is a sexual organ, it circulates in the blood too. So every system relates to each other in that way. This is how you have to find the relationship of all of those fluids in the alchemic, in alchemical manner. They relate alchemically, even if we don't know about it. But because we ignore it, men and women go to the sexual act, ejaculate the semen, and lose all the fluids. Because the sexual fluid is precisely the synthesis of all those fluids. Even what we eat down here in Malkut, we create our sexual energy. The sexual energy is the outcome of what we think, we breathe, the impression that we receive, and what we eat. That is the whole synthesis of all those fluids that relate to the Epta Parapashi Nak. Yes? Does this imply that Adam and Eve shared the same spirit and consciousness? How do we interpret this in relation to the symbolism of the story? Yes, of course. Adam and Eve, in the very higher level, relates to Geburah and to Hesed and to Tifereth, part of the monad. As you see there, this is bone of my bones related to Hesed. Flesh of my flesh is related to Tifereth which is alive as muscular system thanks to the circulatory system of Geburah. So when you said flesh, you take in, in, in account Geburah and Tiferet together. It's a monad. So when Adam said, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, is the real being talking there, which is the monad. The question seemed to imply that Adam and Eve referred to a man and a woman. Yeah. They also say to separate the people physically. Of course, when he said uh, uh, the two physically separated people in, in the flesh, or I mean in the, in the physicality. But in the higher symbol of alchemy, Adam and Eve are related with many levels. In this lecture, we will say relate to the monad, separated forces of the monad that is my twin soul. For instance, I want to find my twin soul. Well, in this case, I am the human soul and I am Tifereth. Then my twin soul is my Geburah inside. That's my flesh because it's bones of my bones. You see, Tifereth expresses the bones of Geburah and the flesh of Geburah. So when I said bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh, spiritually, alchemically speaking, it's in relation with the monad. Now, there are other levels of explanation about Adam and Eve in physicality in Malkut, but that's another thing. There's another thing, because is, this is very deep. Do you have another question? The physical rune itself. The physical rune itself is explained in alchemically, as we were explaining here, the science. I said it's a seal. 
in which you apply the chi, the shen, your jin, when you are sealing yourself with the sign of the cross and by the tetragrammaton. Or when you are performing the Tao cross, which is a circle circling your shen and uniting your chi and your jin with the cross below or the ank cross. It's another seal that relates with energy. Those are the practices of the jera, seals. Any type of seal is related with jera, with those forces, yin yang, the harvesting. Remember that when you perform this, if you are not sowing your energy correctly and you do those seals, they take no effect. Because in order to have effect, you need to practice alchemy. And that's the meaning of this jera. That with the solar harvesting, people take care of the solar harvesting or, or the meaning of the, of the jera in relation with the outside nature. But here we are Gnostics. We have to talk about the harvesting inside of us. How to deal with those energies in order to have something good. If you have a lot of chi, you can heal. You can use your chi to your hands. But you have to transmute. You have to be an alchemist in order to save the chi. And if you are a fornicator, how are you going to save the chi? You might save it or take it from nature with the Tai Chi dances and many other practices that you practice in Taoism. Because you can charge your body also with the runes, the other runes that we teach here. Take the chi from the atmosphere and practice in all the runes in order to charge your body. But if you are a fornicator, what are you doing? Charging your body in order to throw it after, after that in the sexual act? It's just a waste of time. We have to learn how to save energy. And, and, and here we learn how the energies are related with the systems of our physicality. Because the temple, the physical body is the temple of God. That we destroy. Of course, we are not in the level of Jesus that says, Oh, destroy my body and I will resurrect three days after that. It's talking about uh, talking to the Jews, which are precisely uh, those elements that in this case represent the defects and vices that we have. That destroy the body of God or the temple of God. Because this is what we do. Destroy the temple of God in many ways. Anger, lust, pride, envy, laziness, gluttony. Destroy the temple of God. <coughs> That's why the temple of God is called the place for praying, right? To pray. But we had to transform it into a den of merchants. This is how the Bible says, or it states. There is no other question. So, thank you very much. And we bless you in the name of the Shen, the Chi, and the Jin. And by the famous Tetragrammaton. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy.